so yeah, then uh, today's topic uh, uh, is uh, about the ISO 27001 uh, implementation, basically to highlight some key challenges and also uh, provide uh, some uh, insight or highlights on uh, on the best uh, or, or effective solutions, how to, uh, let's say, uh, come over uh, these challenges. Uh, about myself, uh, I will not repeat, uh, uh, intro is already provided. Uh, so, as mentioned, uh, my main uh, focus area and my main responsibilities are related with the uh, auditing and implementation of ISO 27001 uh, standard. Regarding agenda, so uh, at the beginning, uh, the plan is quickly uh, give you some uh, uh, really short overview of what the standard is uh, and uh, what is the structure of the standard. Then uh, we'll kick off with um, highlighting some uh, challenges that uh, in main uh, situations, in most cases, uh, organizations face. Uh, next point, we'll be covering some effective solutions, how to deal with these challenges, and at the end, uh, basically some benefits or what would be the triggers why this standard uh, might be uh, interesting for, for uh, your organization, for example. So before before I start, uh, just want to check uh, how many of you have heard about the standard uh, and, and uh, how many have at least heard something about that. Okay, so then basically all of you are at least familiar with the title and the content of that, but anyway, I will just quickly uh, give some, some uh, overview what it, uh, what it is and what the standard is about. So uh, basically the key uh, concept of the standard is basically give requirements for the organizations uh, how to uh, establish, implement and maintain uh, information security management system. So again, the main focus of all this program, of all this initiative while implementing the standard is to make sure companies, clients, and uh, personal data and information is, uh, is kept securely, which means standard basically uh, is preserving confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the information. So the main focus and all the requirements in the standard uh, basically are focusing to make sure uh, all these three uh, pillars are, are taken into account and covered. Uh, a uh, good thing uh, about this standard is that uh, basically it's uh, applicable uh, for all organizations, so uh, independently of type, size, or, or nature of the organization. So this is pretty universal uh, standard, uh, which covers the key uh, aspects uh, of information security. So quickly on the structure of the standard, there are seven mandatory clauses, which basically defines the, the, the framework uh, of the information security management system. Uh, and after that, we have 114 controls split across uh, 14 domains and 35 uh, control objectives that basically covers all the key uh, aspects uh, what uh, organization must uh, take into account and implement while, while uh, implementing the standard. Uh, moving to the next point, challenges. Uh, again, here I will highlight just really uh, key ones that we have experienced and that most uh, uh, organizations uh, experience while starting uh, uh, the implementation of the standard or even before it is decided. There are a number of things that really uh, pops up in, in all the cases. So first of uh, these challenges I want to highlight is top management uh, commitment, contribution and support. Uh, why it's important and uh, why it's a challenge because in many cases we see that management is ready to support implementation of the standard and get the certification basically to get the paper. But after that all the uh, activities uh, are not done uh, and after the certification, everyone forgets that this is something we uh, need to maintain and, and uh, continuously improve. So 
if there are no management support, if uh, management is not the key uh, trigger of the implementation and maintenance of the standard, this program for sure will fail and there is no reason actually to, to even start it if management is not confident to do that uh, on a uh, continual basis. Another uh, pretty uh, uh, straightforward and pretty uh, 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 known issue is awareness and building security culture within the organization. So as all of uh, you and all of us know that awareness of the employees, any other interested parties is the key issue uh, we are facing when it comes to um, uh, information security. So this is really a challenge uh, and I think this is a never ending story, but uh, uh, very important aspect of the information security management system. If it's not there uh, at some level, then uh, we can do whatever we want. Management can support and, and, and commit if there won't be, uh, uh, let's say, appropriate level of awareness of uh, people who are living in this management system, then uh, there is big chance that all this program will fail. Next, uh, pretty uh, common uh, mistake or challenge that uh, organizations are facing. We have implemented the standard, uh, but as I mentioned, after the implementation and after the certification, uh, things are not maintained and we are not systematically doing what we agreed, what we implemented and what was uh, defined before uh, we, we, we get there. So what it means, it means uh, big challenge is to make sure that people, any uh, relate, uh, any interested parties uh, basically systematically follow the implemented procedures, processes, uh, um, actually after we have completed the implementation of the standard. This is really key uh, that uh, basically is one of the success factors uh, that this uh, uh, implementation of the standard will really add some benefits and and uh, will add some added value to the to the organization. Implemented processes must be followed, and I will try to um, highlight and give some some tips how to how to make it happen uh, in the next slides. And the last point uh, from the challenges perspective that I want to highlight is. Uh, uh, continual improvement. So we have uh, reached some level of the security. Uh, we are uh, implemented processes, procedures, but the very important thing to m is uh, make sure we uh, think about improvement areas, improvement actions also after we have reached this baseline, uh, after the implementation of the standard. And this is something that also is uh, put sometimes a little bit uh, aside. Uh, a lot of uh, management uh, people, uh, a lot of uh, uh, management people in the organization think that we have done it and that's it. We can forget about it and uh, we are certified forever. So this is not true. Uh, so basically, uh, continual improvement is one of the key uh, challenges we see while working with the organizations uh, to make sure that this program is really effective and gives the uh, expected effect in terms of increased information security in the organization. Okay, these are not all challenges, but at least uh, key ones and very important ones. If we can somehow uh, uh, overcome them, then the implementation of the standard will be really successful. Key points uh, to add uh, when it comes uh, to solutions or ways uh, or tactics, uh, how to make this implementation and hold this ISO implementation program effective, uh, of course, is very clearly defined scope, uh, objectives and benefits. So if everyone who are involved and who are in the scope of this program understands that, it's a really good starting point uh, to get those people's uh, buy-in uh, and uh, there's big chance that 
the program will be successful. If at the beginning we fail to uh, clearly uh, explain the scope, uh, benefits and, and why we are doing it, uh, there is a big chance that people who are expected to follow the rules, they won't do that. Another point is um, really formally approved uh, by the management, the implementation and maintenance plan. So here I want to emphasize the word maintenance as I already mentioned, so if we fail uh, to continue doing the right things after the implementation, after the certification, then in a pretty short time uh, we will be back on the same level and we will need to start from the scratch again when the external audit will come next time. So having really management approved and communicated the um, implementation maintenance plan is key uh, to make this program uh, successful. Next point, uh, which is uh, also very important that we have the right resources, the needed resources in both in terms of uh, number of people, uh, but uh, most important uh, uh, are competencies. So if the person uh, is not uh, aware and not very uh, uh, let's say, not expert in this standard, in this area, then it would be really hard to, to make uh, the standard uh, implementation uh, effective. So, big challenge. In many cases, management just assigns this task to person who is uh, actually uh, responsible for some other, uh, other activities, for some other area, it just picked and said, okay, you will be the one responsible for implementation of the standard. But in most cases, uh, people even don't know uh, the concepts of the standard or are not aware how to do that and what's the mo uh, most effective ways to do that. And second thing is, in um, many cases, a uh, person even do not have enough time to basically pay uh, the needed attention to the activities that are needed to implement the standard. So having uh, enough resources and enough uh, competences for these resources is uh, really something we need to focus on when we uh, are really decided to do and implement the standard. Uh, of course, all uh, these things when it comes uh, who is responsible for what, who will do what and what are the expectations from uh, any of the interested parties, they must be very clearly defined. And this defining here, I mean again, really uh, documented, approved by the management that this person will be responsible for the program. You are responsible to contribute, to uh, uh, actually answer any questions, any queries from the person, these responsibilities and authorities must be very clearly defined uh, at the beginning to make sure everyone understands, as I mentioned in the first point here, why we are doing that, what is in scope, how we will do that, and who will be responsible or in charge uh, to manage the program. And uh, 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 last point here, what I want to highlight is, again, coming back to the management, top management, middle management, management team in the organization must be uh, kind of role models for other people. This is really an important point, what I want to highlight, because we have seen a lot of examples. Uh, when we ask something to follow uh, to our employees uh, and management is not doing that, is something uh, <clears throat> that shows that this is uh, not the right way how to do that and these programs fail. If management is not, uh, let's say, following the rules and if they are not encouraged to do that, then we cannot expect that our employees will do that. Pretty uh, simple example, so uh, uh, if, if, we ask, uh, if we ask people to lock their uh, laptops with, with cable locks when they are unattended, and uh, management is not doing that because of uh, the fact that they are from the management, then it's clear that this is not uh, the way how uh, the implementation will work. If it's asked from the interested parties, then the management must show the example and be the role model for others. And this is one of the <coughs> success factors, how to uh, raise awareness of people and also how to make this 
implementation of the standard really uh, efficient and effective. And of course, all the things uh, must be communicated to anyone uh, who are involved in the process, to any in interested parties. Again, as I mentioned, to make sure that everyone is on the same page and everyone understands why, how, who will be responsible for that and how this process will happen and what are expectations from me, either I'm from the uh, uh, employee uh, pool or I'm from the management. So this must be very clearly defined and communicated. Again, uh, of course, we can do that without all these things, just doing that in the background. But as I said, from the experience, if the, uh, those aspects are not taken into account, in most cases, these uh, implementations, these implementation programs fail sooner or later. Just to continue with uh, some uh, important points to highlight uh, what is really uh, important to make these uh, implementations successful. Uh, of course, awareness is one of the top topics when it comes uh, to security, as I already mentioned. Uh, and uh, this is really where a lot of efforts, both in terms of time, in terms of money, must be uh, spent <coughs> to make these things really happen. If we just do standard training, sending emails uh, and, and uh, doing some standard training just because we must do that without paying attention to why we are doing that, what we want to achieve and how to measure what we have achieved, it doesn't make sense to uh, do such kind of trainings or awareness sessions. So uh, it's important to very clearly define the goals and, and metrics, why we are doing that, what we want to uh, achieve in uh, one year or in six months. Uh, and then it, it, it means that we can actually measure where we are and if we are above the baseline where we started. So message from this is please take into account that uh, awareness programs, how we deliver them are really important and planning uh, beforehand is really important. Uh, also, what happens in, 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 in uh, real life, uh, we are delivering, we are preparing some kind of training decks or whatever, and we are delivering that to all people in the organization, which is not <coughs> actually working in most cases, because the uh, important thing is really to define the audience and work with the specific audience. So it means in one of the departments, uh, this communication channel might work, in another it will not work. So it's very important to do and deliver these awareness programs, awareness sessions, uh, specifically uh, organized and, and uh, prepared for specific audience across the organization. Not giving the same messages to all in the same way. Uh, next point uh, regarding the maintenance uh, plan and also improvement plan, which also was already mentioned, but again, this is really key uh, success factor. Having this plan approved by the management and there must be owner or person who is managing and driving all this uh, process. If there are no <coughs> plan documented with specific due dates, with specific actions and with specific responsible persons, it's pretty obvious that at some point uh, in time, this uh, whole process will, will, will fail. So having really defined and approved plan together with the assigned person who drive this process and who is responsible uh, is really key to make it happen. And of course, uh, regular co uh, reporting to the top management on where we are, what issues we are facing, together with regular follow-ups and communication with the, uh, let's say, persons involved in the uh, program with the interested parties is really important to uh, show that we are really taking this seriously and this is not something uh, what we did for certification purposes, but this is what we expect uh, to be long-term program. And uh, this shows people that, yeah, really they are taking, taking, taking it seriously. And uh, our last point in this slide I want to cover is uh, 
uh, regarding the measurements uh, effectiveness uh, and performance uh, evaluation. So this is something uh, uh, really great uh, way how to uh, basically understand where we are <coughs> to show to the management uh, how we are performing or not performing and also really really uh, good uh, way how to justify uh, decisions or how to show to all interested party, parties these are facts based on these facts we can make some uh, decisions so some some examples uh, how to uh, how to do the measurement of the ISMS and what could be these uh, these metrics or, or or measurements are a lot of things are related with uh, technical uh, solutions so few examples are what uh, uh, we have seen uh, regularly on a monthly basis gathering statistics on workstation uh, let's say health antivirus updates uh, data loss prevention solution uh, agents uh, things like that encryption just to see what is the actual situation when we look on the uh, employees workstations on a regular basis gathering these uh, metrics looking at them in a long term and then making decisions if we uh, see that things are stable and fine we don't do anything but if we see that we are failing somewhere we have real facts to uh, go to the management and prove that here we have issue we must do something another example is uh, <coughs> not so technical as i mentioned uh, doing kind of physical walkthroughs in the office looking if people are really following the key requirements like locking laptops uh, when they are unattended not leaving sensitive documents on the desks when they are unattended don't, uh, not leaving uh, access cards somewhere in the public places all these facts uh, gathering gathering on a regular basis uh, recording that and also keeping statistics so if we see that in the previous months we identified 10 uh, people who left their laptops unattended in office we can see what happens in the next five months if the trend is uh, going down or going up we can make appropriate decisions so these are just few examples uh, but the message here is gathering such metrics doing measurements analyzing them and actually using them for uh, making decisions is really uh, helpful and that actually makes uh, everyone awake and we can see the actual situation where we are what's going on and at the end of the session just a few uh, benefits uh, that might motivate people and organizations to move in this direction so again a lot of uh, good things uh, happens and, and might happen if we do and implement this standard so starting from uh, pretty comprehensive and and really structured way how we manage information security so basically it's very clear to everyone uh, what and how we are doing is not just something that someone picked up and decided we will do this but here we have pretty clear requirements pretty clear controls that we want to comply and uh, with which we must comply <coughs> everyone understands uh, how uh, the information security is managed and what is the framework in the organization it's clear for everyone for us and also for our stakeholders uh, for the vendors for the clients most importantly of course uh, this gives some level of uh, trust and and uh, credibility from the clients in most cases uh, if we have uh, implemented the standard and if we are really uh, following the rules requirements uh, and maintaining the standard then it really gives some kind of confidence trust uh, uh, basically to our uh, interested parties to stakeholders clients that we are doing at least the minimum uh, to make uh, the information secure and it's not uh, let's say in a way which is not clear this is clear to everyone how we do that and uh, we can let's say get some credibility or trust from from uh, external parties of course one aspect is uh, co competitive advantage as well so if you are in the list uh, for your clients 
uh, and uh, you are the only one with the certification uh, officially, then it gives you a really uh, good advantage in, in, in uh, between of the others. So uh, saying that, uh, again, what we see a lot of uh, requirements coming from the clients in many cases include requirement to have the uh, certification against ISO 27001. And of course, the last one uh, from the benefits is uh, cost savings that we can gain through decrease of incidents that might happen uh, in the organization. Again, this is uh, pretty depends on, uh, on the uh, maturity, how far we have gone and uh, at which level we are in terms of information security. But it cle it's clear that through these awareness uh, uh, programs, we decrease the potential, ri potential risks uh, and we reduce the security incidents within the organization. So, and then due to the time constraints, just a few uh, facts from uh, very recent uh, research done by IT governance. So all these things which I covered basically are also uh, justified by some real responses from the people, from uh, IT managers and uh, top management people from the organizations across the world. So I will not uh, go into details for each of those things, but these are the facts that uh, basically shows why they are selecting ISO 27001 and why they consider these are really uh, important for them and give some uh, added value to the organization. And of course then challenges which I covered basically also in some extent uh, shows the same, the same trend. And the bottom uh, box shows that still there are one fifth of the all people still uh, states that convincing management and getting management support is an issue. And I'm sure that these 20% without that support, uh, it's not even uh, beneficial to start the session, uh, to start the implementation if we don't have management buy-in. Okay, thank you. That's it from my side. If there are any, any questions, we can quickly take them. Probably. Yes, uh, one of the hardest things of being a moderator is making sure the train runs on time, and that was a fantastic synopsis of that area. Is there a question or two? We have time for maybe one or two questions. Actually, yeah, one of those things I mentioned, uh, what uh, we have seen a lot of organizations are doing, they are physically uh, looking at the people behaviors. There are defined things what, on what we are looking, like unattended uh, badges somewhere in the public places, unattended laptops without locked cables, unattended screens, uh, and things like that, which you can physically uh, just by walking through the office at specific times, consider and tracking, recording all these things and then showing on dashboard that this is where we are. This is a kind of good example what we really see that uh, many organizations are doing. In addition to these technical things that which we can very quickly gather, uh, but these, uh, this is one of the examples how to, how to do uh, something in addition to technical, technical metrics. The good thing about technology is this fantastic slide presentation will be available uh, and you can download it and obviously I'm sure you'd be happy to answer questions at the breaks and in the lunch period as well. Thank yeah, you very, sure. very much for your Thank hard you. work. I appreciate it.